So today is going to be really different. We're going to be doing some resin 3D printing. It's a little bit different for the channel, but um, I, I'll explain here in a minute. But I got everything new set up in my garage, so we're going to dive in. something different today um, I redid a lot of my desks because of the pandemic I've got multiple desks now so I redid some things um, out in the garage changed things around my old area where I used to paint and do things like that I changed into the 3d printing station some of you that watch our channel know that I've got some 3d printers a, a Prusa a filament printer that I like a lot. I keep that in the house because it seems to be very temperature sensitive. Um, and then I have two 3D resin printers. And so I set them up, changed the desk all around and got them set. So let me show you. This is the new layout. Kind of redid my whole area a little bit. I can still use it to do some things, but these are the printers. So this is the Frozen Mini 4K all a lot of weird words but essentially it means it's small and it shoots uh, the light at 4k which makes it work faster and more detail so that's that little guy and this guy was my very first one uh, the Elegoo Mars the original and um, it's not 4k and it's very slow <laughs> um, in comparison so now that we've got these all set up we're gonna try some prints on them I recently uh, oiled the mechanism because you're supposed to do that occasionally and it's been a little while and I had to move them and so I even realigned the plates you have to do that too to make sure that they are uh, correctly leveled and so I'm not going to go through a lot of detail um, on the intricacies I'm just going to walk through a print talk about very high level things anybody that doesn't know anything about resin printing maybe a good starter Again, there's probably much better tutorials. I'm just going to walk through this because I got my station done. Because I got my station done, I'm super excited to try out the whole setup. We got to get our resin ready. This is the most gross. That's not gross. It's just chemically. And it, it's somewhat hazardous, but not like toxic. Like you die immediately type toxic. Um, but it's not good. It smells bad. It's bad for you. But it's not like the end of the world. First thing... This is the frozen resin. And there's so many jars, or jars, there's so many containers of this resin out there, different manufacturers, but this is made by the people that made the printer. Um, it's 4K, so it's a special type of resin that works for 4K light. Um, it's a little bit better, makes more detail than this little guy. Um, again, size is just purely that. Um, this is from the Elegoo guys, um, and it's... Uh, not 4k and it's pretty basic stuff it's actually pretty old um, we'll see if it even works and it's almost empty so I'm not even sure if I have enough for that little guy over there I may not have enough to go to make anything work but we'll see because I mean, we need to do some prints and, and make sure everything's working good so um, different kinds of print, resin for different kind of printers if you got a 4k you should get 4k if you don't have a 4k you can just get some of the basics they also make ones that are transparent and there's a huge variety of resins out there so i'm not gonna go into any of the details on that but just suffice to say there's a lot of resin to choose from depending on what you're gonna do i took the lid off so this is the vat that you pour the resin in and then this is the build plate that goes down and slowly inches back and forth as it builds layers of the print so again i'm not going to go into a lot of detail about this I'm just going through my steps because you're coming along with me to make sure all my stuff still works now that I moved it. I got the resin poured. Let me show you. Good and smelly now. It's very <laughs> in the room. There's no lines on this vat. Some vats have lines showing you where to stop pouring. I always take a guess. So hopefully I'm good. Um, I decided that I'm not going to use the Elegoo today because that resin is more than two years old and I'm almost out. So... We'll just, I'm going to get some new resin for that guy. Um, I should probably place an order anyway. But this one, um, we're going to try this, and it's more detailed. Like I said, the little Sonic Mini 4K is pretty detailed, and we'll uh, 
put the USB drives in and get the files over and I'll show you how it works. USB drive in there and then we go to here and see the big button that says 3D print. So we push that. Then you got to find your file. There's the file. It shows you a little miniature picture of it. I don't hope you guys can see that. And then you just hit go. Um, it's really that simple. Um, the technology is getting better and better. Soon you just put a USB in or you do it wirelessly and just like your laser or inkjet printer at home, I fully expect this to become normal. And I'm going to set up a camera right here and so that you guys can watch it. I'll, I'll speed it up so you don't sit here for two hours because the print will take about the one that we're working on. I think it's got a two and a half hour print job. So it'll take a little while, but I'll, I'll set the camera up. You can see how it works. And then we'll hopefully have something to look at at the end. Sometimes you don't. That's the problem with uh, 3D printing. It's not always good. You Sometimes you get good prints and sometimes not so much. And um, I'm sure there's really good guys out there that get it 99% of the time. Um, I don't spend a lot of time doing this. I haven't actually printed anything for about six months. So I'm likely to fail this print job. So let's see where we end up though. There she goes, she's getting ready. You can see down there, it gives you kind of the time and the percentage done and it shows you the layers. As it shoots, it'll show different layers on the screen. But there she goes into the vat. I always wait for my first couple minutes to make sure there's nothing bad that happens right out of the gate because that's really annoying. And there's a lot of chance that your plate or your uh, vat will fail, the plastic will fail, resin pours all over. Utter catastrophe. There's lots of stories about that. But there she goes. And it has begun. There's the picture. That's the first layer. So now it just goes up and down, up and down, up and down, and shoots different layers. And ho hopefully at the end, we'll have something. They look like when they're still drippy they'll look cool in a minute trust me so this is the tricky part I have to wear gloves because like I said resin bad um, <clears throat> so I have to take them out and I put them in water and then I put them in isopropyl alcohol and I put them in water alcohol water alcohol water alcohol like four or five times I have these really nifty things. I found this all online. I didn't come up with this. These uh, containers, not water, water. Um, but they're basically, they're pickle jars, right? And um, they got little, here. Nice latches, right? But they've got the little pickle things in them. So you just kind of clean all the stuff off. So I'm going to show you how you actually just move the whole thing over. I got my gloves on, right? Let me grab this, you unscrew this. Every printer is different, but this one you unscrew this big screw and you lift it off. And I let it drip a little bit to see if there's any spot, any residual. But um, I waited a while before I came out. So then I'm going to pick it up. Oh, there's some, there's some dripping off. Okay. I took this old Tupperware container that's kind of an odd shape. It just didn't really fit on any shelf. And I use it to hold everything while I get it off, while I get the prints off. And I use these plastic razor blades. I highly recommend these. They're so good and they're so cheap, but they're plastic razor blades. So they don't cut. They just are really useful. And then I use an old toothbrush. We're going to get them all very shiny in the water and shine all, get all of the residue off. Yeah. Those are all the, the supports. They just snap off. They're really um, a pretty impressive way that the uh, people behind resin printers have figured out. They're just little supports like you see in a building being built. And they attach just in the little teeny spot and they just snap right off on those little ends, right? It's amazing. Um, but if you don't have good supports, your day is ruined because your prints will just come out. Your prints will actually come out just like this with nothing on them. 
it's really sucky. So you, supports are the key. And the next step, you put them under an ultraviolet light and it, it basically cures this, cures, cures this. So it's permanently like this. If you don't pat, if you don't get all the water off, it'll leave little white residue and the white residue will not come off. It's like stuck in there. And it's basically the water um, cured into the res. It's not a good thing. Um, I learned that <laughs> my own uh, by my own mistake. So I, I always get all of the liquid off, even if it's just the alcohol. The alcohol will evaporate, but the, I get every little drop of alcohol off before I cure them. Something that I didn't find any information on when I started messing with this a year ago. I learned. This is a little fingernail ultraviolet light. It's okay. Um, it's not great for big stuff. Like one that I built out of a cardboard box and it's huge. You could put stacks and stacks of stuff in there. And it's got a little ultraviolet light that shoots down in all directions and it's got tin foil on the inside. It's homemade. It is what it is. It does what it does. Um, they have really elaborate ones that are as much as one of the printers that do all the cleaning and everything I just did and shoot it with ultraviolet light and you kicks it out like a microwave. Um, but there's much as a printer, so and all you really need is to do what I did. So I'm doing it this way for the moment, but I may give in if I keep doing more and more. Once it's cured, it's all done. So it's pretty cool. Um, it takes a little bit of work. It takes a lot of learning. Um, it is a little bit expensive. The big guy here is like 35 bucks. The little guy is about 25 bucks. Um, so it's not cheap. You get, uh, depending on what you're making, right? You can get any number of things out of them. If I was just doing coins, I'd probably just need that that one that, that one bottle for a year. Um, but, you know, it, it is an interesting thing. You can make all sorts of cool stuff. And there's a whole bunch of free stuff on a whole bunch of websites out there. Thingiverse is the, the thing that, that uh, the site that everyone usually goes to because everything's are free. Um, these were free. Um, totally available. I'll put the link down below. I didn't make them. The guy that made them, you're awesome. Um, I had nothing to do with it, but they're out there for free. So um, take a look and uh, get what you can get. There's a whole bunch of sites out there. Um, anyway, I'm happy my printer is working. So um, this isn't a bad. This is much easier than trying to do it in the shed. So there you go.